Well, welcome back to In The Zone, where we dive deep into the stories of those who've pushed their limits in sports, overcome life's toughest challenges, and inspired us all to strive for greatness. Today, we have a truly remarkable guest. It's my man right here, Emmanuel Newton, a name that resonates with resilience, dedication, and triumph. Born in the heart of Inglewood, California, Emmanuel's journey is nothing short of inspirational. The former Bellator lightweight heavy champion, right. Emmanuel has left his mark in the world of mixed martial arts, capturing multiple championships across various organizations, but his accolades inside the ring are just the beginning. Today, Emmanuel channels his champion mindset into training, coaching, and mentoring the next generation of fighters. But that's not all. He's also venturing into the world of business as he works on launching his private security company, Alpha Red Protection, alongside his business partner, Vic Anderson. This new endeavor signifies not just a business venture, but a mission to protect and serve with the same passion and dedication he's shown throughout the fighting career, right? Your yes, fighting career. Yes, sir. So Emmanuel's life story is a testament to the power of the human spirit facing the immense loss of both parents at an early age. Enduring numerous injuries and overcoming personal mistakes, he's emerged stronger and more determined. His journey is a vivid illustration of how resilience, hard work, and a never say die attitude can pave the way to success both in and out of the ring. So as we get ready to explore the life of a man who's fought his way through adversity, achieved greatness, and is now making a difference in the lives of others, Emmanuel Newton, welcome to In The Zone, brother. Thank you for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I, I just want to get started. I, I know that, uh, you know, I, you have a, a, a history, man. You're, you're uh, an amazing champion. I, I was looking at your highlights, and I know you've done uh, some amazing things in the ring. And uh, I just want to kind of get started to, to, you know, get started where, see where this all started at. Like, what, you know, tell me a little bit about your childhood. Uh, yeah, I mean, where it really began, like the, the whole fighting stage of my life was, uh, you know, I was always a martial artist. So I was always in, you know, Ninja Turtles and sh shows like that. And, you know, I was pretty athletic as a kid, so I can do like crazy kicks. And everybody's like, oh, man, you should like do this for real. So I was like, all right, one day. <clears throat> so, um, you know, my dad passed when I was uh, nine. Mm. And then um, so, you know, that was kind of, you know, difficult. But at the same time, it uh, strengthened me, I think, even as a child to kind of uh, kind of be an example for my sisters and to try to become, a, um, I guess, a, a man a little earlier than maybe should have been. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, and then years went by and then my mom passed when I was uh, 16. Wow. So that's what opened up the door because I was um, at North Torrance High School, North Torrance. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and I was- um, Can you get a little bit closer just so we can- Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you, brother. And I was, uh, you know, I was playing, uh, you know, football, you know, for, for you know, like three years. But then after my mom passed, I didn't really, you know, do much with my grades and really just kind of ditched school and kind of wild out, mm -hmm. you know, just, uh, you know, from all the emotions. But, uh, you know, so that opened up the door for wrestling because two separate seasons. Sure. So uh, one of my teachers was the uh, was the wrestling coach, uh, Donnie Garriott. Appreciate you, sir. Um, so he said, well, why don't you come in and try wrestling, you know? And I was like, oh, man, you know, wrestling back in the day, too, you know, it was kind of like. And guys all grabbing up on each other. You know, <laughs> and what age was this? Uh, senior year. Okay. Senior year. It was high school. Yeah, high school. Yeah. So I was like, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't want to do all that. But I was like, what else am I going to do? You know, sit on the bench, you know, and watch these guys play. Right. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go and try this wrestling thing out. And I knew one takedown. I knew a hip toss. And I was like, can I do this? And he was like, yeah, you can do that. And I was like, really? And I was like, okay. Well, I'm going to try this thing out. You know, so I went and I went to CIF and I did pretty well for my for my first year of wrestling. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, but then in that in that time, I met uh, Tito Ortiz. He was coming in and doing some seminars at our at uh, North Torrance High, and uh, and he was like, "Hey, man, you know, like you're pretty athletic. You want to fight?" And I was like, "Ah, oh, you know, it'd be cool. You know, like I've been talking about this for years." So then, I long story short, I went into the gym with him, started training with him, kind of helping him prepare for his fights. Um, and then I met my first uh, MMA coach, Paul Herrera. Thank you, Paul. Hey. And, uh, <laughs> and so I met him, and he was just like, hey, you know, like, you know, you're pretty good. You want to fight? And I was like, yeah. He said, okay, you got to fight in two weeks. Two weeks. Oh, wow. So I was like, all right. You know, it was all underground back then. Everything was, uh, you know, low key, you know. Uh, so I was like, all right, you know, I'll do it. You know, 18 year old kid, you know, ready to get in there and, and, and you know, scrap. So uh, she went in there and I fought. I remember the guy, first guy I fought was 33 years old. Oh, wow. And I was like, man, but I went in there and I won, you know. So I was like, okay, maybe I can do something with this. 
And then, uh, so yeah, that opened up the door to fighting. And then I kind of went down that path, which really helped me at a time, you know, when I was going through it, you know, trying to still trying to get over my, my mother's death and still trying to kind of find my way in the world. But uh, so MMA opened up that door. So, and went down that path and you know, a lot of other things happened there, you know, with, with wrestling, going back, wrestling in Cerritos College, uh, you know, to try to grow my skills in the grappling department, you know, meeting other coaches, uh, you know, like 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 Rampage, like mm-hmm. like Tito, like like my boy, like our boy Sebastian, right? You know, and uh, you know, and I just kind of just started my journey there with uh, down in Huntington Beach at HP Ultimate, and then just from there, just uh, took the journey, you know, being a martial artist and a fighter. Wow! So it really sounds like uh, you know mixed martial arts really changed the trajectory of your life. Yeah, it really did. It really did. You know, if uh, I know if I wouldn't have fought, I would have found something else to get into. Yeah. I would have had to do with fighting. It would have probably would end up ending me up in trouble or, yeah. or in prison or, you know, who knows, maybe even worse. Right, right. Wow. Wow. That sounds like a amazing story, man. So you started back, I mean, just, you know, you, you went through all this childhood adversity and then you, it seems like you, you focused all that energy into, you know, training and fighting and then, so, okay, so now we're 18 years old. You competed you know, uh, against uh, your first, you know, opponent, which was 33 years old, he said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. How did that feel? I mean, cool, you know, like, to, to beat up a, a, a grown-ass <laughs> man, you know. You know, um, it's really cool, you know, but I but I know that, I knew that my, after that fight, that I could do something with this just because it was so easy for me. And, uh, you know, this guy here already had a couple of fights. I could tell they were setting me up just to, like, just go out there and see this kid get beat up. Right. So, uh, so I knew, okay, I can do this. And then, but the journey was tough back then. You know, MMA wasn't legal yet in mm. a lot of states. I think only in only in uh, Vegas, you know, because of the UFC, you know, which was getting more popular, but it was still pretty low key. Um, right. But, uh, but yeah. So, so I was. It was a journey because I had to, you know, go fight it in reservations, and sometimes I wouldn't even get paid because if the boxing commission would show up, you know, the the promoter would be about the back door with all the money, you know. Oh right, so, right. And people would be hunting him down, and eventually guys like that, you know, they got theirs in the end, you know. Mm-hmm. Whether if it be them not being able to put shows on anymore, or even you know getting getting found out and getting their asses whooped, you know. So mm-hmm. uh, you know, so but you know, but that was the the game in the beginning. Before it was called uh, MMA, it was called NHB, no holds barred, you know. No so, way. Okay. Yeah, no holds bar. No holds barred. But then 2006 is when they started legalizing it. Legalized it in California, and I think the commission they saw the money and the profit that could come from it, and then it just spread like that, like wildfire. So that's, sure. that's what it's always all about. It's like it, it, as long as there's money involved into any type of sport, that's when the government comes in and it's like, hey, I need my share. <laughs> Give us our. Part. Oh, there's money. Let me take that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I was. It was crazy because like my first fight. You know they were testing for everything you know back in the day we you know we were, we were blazing we were smoking you know right right and so i didn't think it was a big deal you know i would fight i would smoke the day before a fight you know go out there and get it so i got that's when i first got popped and i was like for weed i was like man this is not even gonna you know it seemed like it even make you enhance you you know but they were trying to make money <laughs> on everything everything you could do so so yeah so that's when i knew that the game was real you know oh, wow. i saw them start you know, you know popping everybody and and taxing everybody and I was like, okay, time to take this more serious. So I had to kind of uh, be a little more disciplined. You know, yeah. still, still my problems, still, still, yeah. still, still wild out a little bit, especially after becoming champion. Um, but in the end, you know, I knew like this is when MMA was going to do something big, okay. you know, in the world. So you started competing, and you know, after your first fight, and uh, you know, what what uh, different organizations did you compete for? Or- Let's see. I was first. I was, um, you know, Gladiator Challenge, King of the Cage. Mm competing with them they're yeah. notable man i've yeah. heard of all these yeah they've been around for a minute you know yeah. like a lot of a lot of uh you know big name fighters you know got their start there you know in those organizations um and then i went into canada i fought for an organization called msc um with uh, mark pavlich thank you mark and uh you know and it was a really good organization it was around for a while you know, so i held the championship for them and then uh then from there uh you know i got the call to uh, well then from there i was uh i was getting ready to preparing to go to ufc but then I, uh, after my IFL fight, I bought a motorcycle, mm. and uh, you know, being a stupid, you know, how old was I? Twenty one, you know, twenty one year old kid, you know, being dumb, you know, trying to top my bike out, you know, on the freeway, you know, three in the morning, you know, was drinking, you know, being dumb already, you know, and I crashed, you know, so and I had, uh, I was down for like almost a year and a half with just a staph infection in my arm because of all Whoa, the surgeries wow. I had to go through. So that's another yeah. conversation in itself. But uh, but that it was a blessing in disguise because that allowed me to kind of sit back, 
and kind of let the sport kind of grow and evolve mm -hmm. so that when I came back in, I didn't come back in like as being a person who, you know, was active. I came back in, you know, brand new. Right. I had to be, I had to learn things all over again. I had to become a different fighter. And I believe that if that accident wouldn't have happened, then I would have kind of stayed on the trajectory that I was on and that trajectory that it's I was on. It's a pretty on. intense injury, man. Was that your first injury? Uh, yeah, I mean, but yeah, for you know, something that serious. That yeah. serious, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it was it was really bad, you know. But uh, but it opened up the door for me to kind of evolve into a different fighter, so that I yeah. could, you know, become uh, more, I guess, uh, involved in the game, you know, on all levels, not just on grappling, not just on striking, you know, not just on tactics and how to, you know, use the cage and use the stuff like that, but just in every other way, you know. Yeah, normally things like that are the things that just stop people completely from performing any type of sport you know you went through a, a motorcycle accident came out of it and then you ended up becoming an amazing champion bro so that that's wow awesome. so okay so we we went through you know the, you went through these different promotions that you competed for i mean were these amateur at this point or did you jump right into pros or how, how did that go well there was no amateur organizations around like when mm -hmm. i said when mma first started it was it was all pro you know, mm -hmm. Camel didn't come around, which is the, one of the first, you know, the commissioned uh, amateur organizations, I want to say, until a couple of years later. So everything that I was doing was either underground or and I went straight pro. So all these organizations were pro, um, you know, and then Bellator was the biggest one that I fought for. You know, that's kind of like my peak, you know, um, when I became a champion for them. And that was back in um, 2015, about 2015 to 18, I was with them. So, so when you were 18, what, what year was this? Uh, that was 2002. Okay, so you went from 2002 to 2015, so that's about 13 years before yeah. you started. Yeah, before in Bellator. I, before I started in Bellator, I was just you know competing wow. in different organizations, uh, you know, because there was a lot like you know when in MMA became legal, there was a bunch of guys trying to put together their own organizations and trying to you know pr promote to be like a UFC kind of brand, mm -hmm. but uh, but you know some made it, and some didn't, or some got bought out. So yeah, I mean, those things are are. That's interesting, man. So you went from these different pro professional promotions and then you ended up in Bellator. So tell me how you ended up getting into Bellator. What was that transition to, you know, King of the Cage and, uh, you know, the other promotions that you're a part of to actually getting to a promotion like Bellator, which is a pretty high level promotion? Yeah, so so at the time, you know, the top organizations were like uh, were Bellator, were USC, obviously Bellator, uh, strike force was still around you know before they got bought out and uh but um so yeah so i was preparing for another fight but then ed suarez you know thank you ed came came in and said hey you know bellator's having a tournament you know you have two weeks but can you make the weight and I'm like, okay you know yeah i'm, I'm already kind of going in that path anyways so you know i said i trained for those two weeks got my weight down and then i had my first uh tournament fight in bellator won the first one uh, lost the second one uh, to decision, but you know I was on their roster. I was in their their radar. So then, uh, so then I got. So I just went back in the gym. Got went back hard. You know, training, 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 knowing that you know the call could come again for the next year's tournament. Sure enough, it did. And then, uh, and then that's when I kind of just catapulted, you know, from uh, from being you know a, a you know B class, you know, uh, you know mediocre fighter to I think moving up into the A class. You know, being able to start becoming ranked in the world. Wow. Wow. So, I mean, uh, how long did it take for you to, how many fights did you have in Bellator before you actually, um, you know, went for the championship belt? Uh, well, I won, well, after I won the tournament, so the tournament was three fights. And after I won the tournament, I fought for the uh, interim belt. Mm. Um, and then after that, then I fought for the actual belt. So six fights. About six fights? Six fights. Wow. Yeah, so. That's awesome, man. So how did that feel? Oh, amazing. You know, like it's, uh, you know, it's accomplishing, uh, you know, my dream and, you know, my purpose, as I feel at that time, was to be a fighter, to be a world champion, and to you know show the world, you know, my skills as a martial artist. So it it felt amazing, you know. Yeah, I remember walking into a gym. It was a, a mixed martial arts gym in Torrance, actually. Speaking of Torrance, that's probably why that uh, they had your face up there. So I walked in, I seen you. And it was a poster of you, mm -hmm. and I was like. Okay, cool. You know, and I kept walking, whatever, and I trained. But um, it's a trip because years later, I ended up meeting you. Yeah. I'm like, oh, shit, this is Emmanuel Newton right here. This is a guy I seen on the poster a long time ago. 
so it, it's it's cool to uh you know to see your journey man so okay so i mean you went through that you know uh, you went through this mma career and it's a amazing magnificent career man congratulations thank on you. that thank you bro. you know um so what happened afterwards so you pretty much we finished with with mixed martial arts uh, that was around I mean, as far as like actually competing, when did you you start competing? Um, I stopped competing in uh, when I was thirty three. So let me say, what is that? Two thousand and uh, let me say two thousand eighteen, maybe. Yeah, two nineteen. Mm -hmm. I think it was my was my last fight. So no way. Yeah, so I'm four, I'm just turned forty. So like yeah, so like eight years ago. Was my okay. Last fight. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, so had that, but I was just like you know, body can't hold up. Didn't have the drive, you know, just. Too much going on in my life you know had a couple of kids you know yeah so you know so i was like okay like if i can't put my all into being a fighter you know and my mind's over here and over there then i have to find another avenue or else i'm gonna go in here and get hurt or go in here and be you know made more of a fool of because i'm trying to do something that doesn't make sense for you know the season that i'm in in my life so then this is when i start getting into the training aspect of things you know i'm doing okay. the security as well uh and just started growing myself as a trainer and as a coach and uh you know and then getting more into security business you know doing some private uh, protections for uh for some celebrities you know going and doing uh, some of their parties and things like mm -hmm. that uh, and then took that path but uh but the coaching was the main the main uh i guess foundation that i had underneath me to be able to build up this new season in my life which i'm still in now yeah and uh you know and i'm and i'm, I'm very thankful you know for the fighting you know time and i'm very thankful for the time that i'm in now which is uh, i feel is you know helping me to become um more financially secure properly because when i was fighting yeah finances were okay but i was i was wild and i didn't know what to do with my money i was just spending it here spending it there and i uh, didn't do anything with it and when it's coming you think that it's gonna keep on coming keep coming but that's i believe that's a, as i'm seeing now i believe that's a lot of champions mm -hmm. you know they they and unless you have somebody that's really having your back and trying to help you invest which i did at the time thank you antonio mckee <laughs> I, I did it at the time but you know i was stubborn yeah. you know and i was i was egotistical and i was kind of weird anyways with the whole universe and spiritual thing and i thought like i had everything and figured out anyways so uh so i didn't do anything with it but now i have a different understanding so hopefully this time around maybe not through fighting as much or competing myself but being able to do it through the the business side of you know mm -hmm. being a coach and being a mentor and uh and helping people to open up doors for themselves which i believe also open some doors for you no, so absolutely we're all, we're all yeah. going down the same path together you know yeah what i really believe is the more that you help other people the more that it helps yourself for sure. you know and obviously you do it for the heart of you know in your heart of helping other people but when you start helping other people it just always you always get that energy thrown back at you for sure it's, you it's know inevitable and I, and I and i see that more and more now that you know like if you do good for people you know, especially good, with you coaching yeah, yeah you know it's gonna find you you know and you really and if you really care for the people that's a one of the biggest thing I tell a lot of coaches are like, okay, how do you how are you doing so well? How are you getting so many members? Like, cause I care, you know, like you got to care for the people. You know, you have to have that heart, you know, especially being a trainer. You know, you have to be able to get joyous when they're joyous, when they see results in their in their fitness or and you know in their mindset. You know, grows. You know, you got to be able to fill that with them and be like, heck yeah, man, that's great. You know, I'm happy. I'm happy that I'm on this journey with you, and I believe that's what allows people to really grow as individuals, whether if that be in the fitness industry or you know. You know mentally or, or you know or spiritually you know um, yeah but you got to be able to enjoy the journey with them or else it's kind of hard to to do something that you don't enjoy you know no oh, absolutely well that's great that's great to hear i'm glad that you're enjoying that i mean i know it takes uh there's some people that do it and they just do it for the money and those seem to be the people that don't end up making it in life sure. you know as far as that career goes now you had you know you got into personal training and you're you know obviously you, you were talking about the the business side of things so I mean, let, let's talk about that. What 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 do you feel is like um, the thing that is making you you know most successful in in being a coach? Well, really following um, you know following the system and I guess the the protocols that that you have instilled you know that you've shown us role you know with uh, doing doing the proper paperwork and you know going about you know promoting yourself properly to the to the to your client you know whether if that be through you know, hey, look at my acolytes, you know, look at what I've completed or, you know, hey, you know, like I'm going to be right here with you, helping you get through this journey, you know, and, uh, you know, and then doing it properly through, uh, I guess, the proper, um, I guess, mechanics and the way things roll with being a trainer and being a businessman. Uh, so been doing that and, you know, been doing it with with my whole heart. And I see that's what's really 
and working, you know. But yeah. But if you don't have a foundation underneath, like that you've built up for us at the gym. Thank you, bro. You know, and uh, the ability to to eat it right, and the ability to take it and be humble, sit back, listen, uh, knowing that you know you can look around and see the proofs in the pudding. You know. Yeah. You know, so if it, if it works, then you just gotta humble yourself and follow down that path and uh, and take take your skills along and whatever ability you have as being a coach and being a trainer, being a mentor. And, uh, and it's inevitable to see to see growth and it's inevitable to see you know stability whether if that be in your career or in your in your physical life and your in mental life whatever it is you know yeah well i mean just uh to to let the viewers know so uh emmanuel is currently a coach he's a, a high level coach a level three coach was the highest level coach that you could be at the hard works fitness uh brand gyms and uh he trains at the fourth street location on fourth street in cherry in long beach california so this is, this is a man right here. So you want to train with a high level champion? That, that's where you're going to meet him at. Now, I mean, you know, just going back to the business aspect of it, um, that's interesting. So I, 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 you know, knowing obviously, you know, running the business, I know you're the highest level coach at that facility. You know, you you do the most sales, but you also have the most connections with people. So I, obviously, that goes hand in hand. It seems like you have a system in one side, then the other side. You know, as far as business goes, then on the other side, you have a situation where you actually care about the people people actually run up to you talk to you i see your classes i walk into the gym and you know they're packed right you have every single bag taken you have as soon as you're done with the class you have a client as soon as you're done with that client you have another class as soon as you're done with that class another client and then another client you're there at 6 a.m in the morning you do so what do you think if if you were to tell another coach about the things that could be successful you know that make you successful what are those things that make you successful? What makes, and you know, aside from your 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 accolades, just your work itself. Like, what are things that you would tell another personal trainer that they would need to do to get the success that you've achieved? Uh, I mean, commit time. <clears throat> you know, don't uh, put yourself on the side for a minute, sidelines. You know, be more about you know the business and you know and the goal and you know be on the same page as everybody else around you mm -hmm. i'm not saying you got to be like everybody else but if we're not all trying to walk on you know the, the same road you know together you know then uh, i think it makes for an issue you know it makes for you know uh you know imbalanced camaraderie i think uh having people around you to you know correct you and to help you and to humble you is important mm -hmm. but if you're not uh able to receive that because you're more worried about yourself are more worried about you know what you want to do through the day or what your opinions or feelings are then you're never going to make it as far as you can you know so just being humble and like commit a season commit a season you know like i've i've told myself i'm going to commit three years three years of just putting in the work and just you know not asking any questions and if i do feel opinionated about something make sure that it's coming out right so i'm not trying to offend anybody but i'm just trying to show that i'm here to learn and here to grow but uh but yeah really just put in the work and and all, if you if you're a part of a system that works like we like we have here at hard works you know then go with it you know mm -hmm. don't don't gotta question don't gotta ask don't gotta you know uh don't gotta freaking murmur and be upset about anything man just do the work and eventually yeah. it'll, it'll show off and you know itself and again you gotta speak up i mean it sounds like there's two sides to it right now that you're talking about one side of it is you know obviously spending the time and that's with anything anything that you're gonna do in life you have to spend in you have to spend time in order for you to see the achievements that you want to achieve the other side of it is also being in an environment that can help you prosper, help you grow. It's like if you have a seed, if you're the seed and this seed turns into, you know, a sequoia tree, right? But if the seed is, uh, I'm sorry, the seed is not in the correct soil or not on soil, it's not ever going to grow. So That's the right. environment also matters. That's is right. that, that is that pretty much yeah, what you're saying? 100%, 100%. The, yeah. the environment, the people you have around you. So... And sometimes when you start out, as I'm seeing, you know, just what we have going on in the gym, you, know, you got to be patient. You have to, because some people got to weed themselves out, as right. we've seen, you know, and, uh, and some people have to be able to understand, like, their place, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, like, and it may just be for a season, you know, if you got to take the bat seat for a season. I know I'm capable of this, but I see this person right here, whether if he have, you know, more time into it or whether if he have, you know, more uh, knowledge of the, the system that you're trying to learn, you know, don't think you know anything, you know, like, know that you have these skills but become like new become like a student become like be willing to and ready to learn and grow and then uh and that, the business is going to grow from that but if you're always trying to do your own thing you're always trying to add your own two cents or you know be louder than you than you should be at, at you know any given time then things are usually going to go opposite for you yeah no i see that 
I mean, I think that the one of the most important things to being successful is remaining a student. Sure. It's like you always have to remain a student first, and then you teach, right? And then when you teach, you're still a student because you learn twice, that's right? Right. So that's very important. It's like you have to go through these, you know, these learning curves. And a lot of the times, people create a peak, or a, whether it's the peak is, you know, their ego, or uh, it maybe peaks are wrong, but they create a ceiling. Right. Yeah. Peak would be the wrong word, but a ceiling that, you know, doesn't allow them to keep growing because they feel that they know everything like you were saying, That's right. you know, it would be one side of it or the other side being, you know, that they can't for whatever reason, um, you know, they, they just choose to, to have somebody else get them to feel certain ways. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, yeah, those are the things. Well, I know that, um, you know, you're an amazing coach at, at Hardworks Fitness on 4th Street, you know, and I thank you for all that work that you've been putting in there. Now, I want to ask you a question. So, I mean, you, you were talking about your security company that you're looking at, uh, you know, that you're in the middle of, of, you know, growing or starting. Can you tell us a little bit about that journey? Uh, yeah, um, you know, I've worked in security my pretty much ever since I've been fighting, you know, whether it be at a bar or at a at a nightclub, I've always been in security. Um, but when I met my uh, my my partner, my boy uh, Vic Anderson, you know, he's the one that opened up the door into the high end security. You know, dealing mm. with you know the high end celebrities. You know, we've done security for. You know, How'd you guys meet? Uh, actually, um, I met him years ago mm. in training at a gym. But then our paths ended up crossing again through a friend who, when I was, because I was looking for um, a security gig at the time. But I was like, but I'm getting tired of doing these, you know, these nightclubs and these bars, where I got to worry about, you know you know, getting stabbed or shot, you know, depending on the night. Right. I was like, I want to do something different. You know, I want to do something that has to do with a little more high end. So I was talking to uh, to one of my friends who knew Vic, and he's like, well, I know this guy. And then when he opened up that door, like, I was like, haven't I met you before? And we, we trained at the body shop before. So Oh, really? Yes, yeah, so I'm a big believer in, but you know, everything, you know, it's one big circle, you know. Uh, you know, like they say, small world. I mean, but I don't really believe in the small world coincidence things, I believe that everything happens for a reason. And usually you cross paths with people before you're gonna do something bigger with them, mm -hmm. you know, whether if you know it or not. So, uh, so yeah, so met him and then um, and then that opened up that door to the kind of higher end security, which let me know, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be, uh, you know, I'm nothing against security, like, you know, guard front doors, you know, I I'll still do that from time to time mm -hmm. down in West Hollywood. Um, but at the same time, it's like, uh, like if, if I wanna go take it to the next level, I have to be around the next level individuals. Yep. You know, whether that be in the training world, as I am with you and, and what we have going on over at Hard Works, or whether that be in the security world, you know, which, you know, I've put together with, with Vic and, and growing and learning that field. So, uh, so yeah, so I've been doing security since I've been young, but now it's really starting to to, to grow when it comes down to, uh, you know. I'm glad you met him, man. You know? that, that sounds, yeah. as you really are, you know, there's a saying that says you are the five people that you hang around the most. Right. You know, and you're not too far from them. So it's like if you're around solid people, entrepreneurs, you're going to end up being like them. If you're around a bunch of bums, you're going to inevitably, inevitably end up being like them. Right. Sure. So that's that. So, okay. So that's, you know, you met Vic and then, uh, and then fast forward into the future. So how, how did you end up thinking about this idea of starting this Alpha Red Protection Company? Well, um, I had... Like I had a, a client of mine, a student of mine, who uh, who works for a place called the Dalmatian Club. It's right there in San Pedro. It's like a it's like a country club, but like uh, for the Croatian community up in San Pedro. So I met him, and then he was like, "Hey, you know, we need like some like legit security to be here now." So I was like, "Okay." So I went in there and, and started working with them, and then like it went really well. I was able to bring some of my other guards in, and I was able to get my boy Vic kind of involved in it. So I was like, okay, well, I want to start doing my own thing, you know, because, you know, not just with Alpha Red, but, you know, an off branch of that, you know, still connected and still, you know, we're still sourcing through each other. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, I believe that, you know, we need to have our fingers in more places, you know, we need to have our fillers out more. So this gave me the ability, you know, to have, you know, the drive to want to do something bigger with my own security, you know, company, obviously still connected to the people around me as well. Okay. So... Have you officially started this company, or where are we at with not, that right not now? Not yet, not yet. Um, 
You just need to get get a proper branding, you know, get all the proper licensing. Uh, you know, I could go through, you know, other people around me that have, you know, already have the, uh, you know, all the, the licensing and everything, but I kind of just want to do my own thing as well, you know, even if I'm still connected to them, but it'd be nice so that. It's always the best way. Always the best way, especially because, yeah. I mean, I want to I wanna go bigger than California. You know, I want to go into other states. I believe that um that private security is going to be something that's really, you know, a big commodity here coming up here soon where people mm-hmm. are going to need it and they're going to want it. So just kind of, you know, putting things in line to be prepared for when, when that when that market opens up even more. Mm. Okay. Wow. I mean, it seems like you're putting yourself in a good position to be able to, you know, grow your company. And I mean, that, you know, security is definitely a, a commodity. It's something that people need, yeah, yeah. you know, people need security, especially high level individuals. But um, wow, that's amazing, man. So, I mean, what what does a future hold for Emmanuel Newton? I, you know, just continuing to grow with the gyms, you know, with the hard works. You know, I believe in whatever what we're doing at the gym, I believe in what you and, and, and Hung and, and all the other guys have put together. So just continuing to grow with that, you know, to help people with their health and fitness and self defense abilities. And then just, you know, just seeing where the security thing goes, you know, as the world continues to turn and I believe get a little wilder and crazier because it's kind of the way things are looking. Right. You know, that that's just going to open up for itself. And it's just a matter of just being patient and being prepared to walk through that door. Well, there you go. There you have it. That's Emmanuel Newton for you guys. <laughs> hey, brother, I, I, Truly appreciate your, uh, you know, your story. It's it's amazing to hear the adversities, you know, that we got started with, and then going into, you know, the, of course, the, the loss of your parents, and I know how how heartfelt, you know, that is, man. And then going from that into it leading you into the right direction, of you know, you become you getting into mixed martial arts, and then from mixed martial arts, taking that for you know, thirteen to you know, fifteen years. And actually becoming a, a, a Bellator, you know, light heavyweight world champion. And then from there, you know, getting into helping other people in the world with your, you know, through your skills and, uh, you know, doing personal training and then going into the world of, you know, security and now looking to, you know, for entrepreneurship to become a, a businessman in your own, you know, private security company. So it's like you have an amazing story, you right. know. And that's, I think that those are the things that people like to hear, you know, and those are the things that motivate people. I mean, it motivates me. I, I hear you. I'm like, man, bro, that's crazy. You came from that and look at where you're at now. And it's like sky's the limit for the future. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I'm thankful, you know, uh, to be able to have made the mistakes that I've made in my life and the things that would have, you know, destroyed most people. But, um, but I feel like it's, it strengthened me. And as, as I tell everybody, you know, like, if you want to see results, you got to put the work in, you know, if, you know, and the work isn't always going to be easy, you know, and that's even in making mistakes in life, you know, that makes you have to work in order to, to bounce back from those mistakes. But if you're always going to let, you know, uh, your mistakes hold you down or let that be a crutch or let that be something that, that keeps you, you know, held to the point of where you're never going to grow, then you're never going to get ahead. But you got to understand that the tribulations and the trials in life make for growth, right? Because that's how we get anything, right? If you want to, you know, if you want to drive a car, you still got to get in the car. You still got to start it up. You still got to, you know, put the time in there to 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 drive and get to those places. And yeah, be irritating and frustrating at the time. But once you get there and and you do the work that needs to be done, you you feel accomplished. You know, you know, if you want to get in shape, you know, it sucks freaking having to be at the gym, getting all sweaty and getting all sore, and like especially when you don't want to be there. But believe it or not, those are the days when you have the best outcomes. Yeah, when you show up and you don't want to be there. You know, so. It's just understanding that, you know, tribulation and, and trials makes for, you know, what you desire in life to come to pass, you know, the good things, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, uh, there's a saying, you know, become, I don't, I don't know verbatim, but it's become excellent at doing the mundane. Yes. You know, yeah, the yeah, things yeah. that are boring, mm-hmm. do them over and over and over and over again. And those are the things that will create your success. Sure. I agree. You know? 100% role and you've, and I appreciate you and I appreciate everything that Thank you, you, you're doing and everything you're continuing to do because it's giving me uh, you know, not just an, a, a new drive, but just giving me the, uh, the ability to see and to understand that I can do these things as well. But I just have to be able to like I said, put in that hard work, baby. You That's know, right. Hard work. Hard work. <laughs> don't, don't give up. You know, keep on going. You know, love and care for the people around you. You know, separate yourself from the people that you see aren't helping you. 
aren't going on that same journey with you and eventually it's inevitable for you to for you to see greater things in your life it's That's inevitable right. put in the hard work <laughs> my brother if there's ever anything that i could do for you appreciate you i'm always here for you thank you brother but i uh, i want you to tell the, our uh, our listeners and the people watching where they could follow you at i uh, i got my instagram at uh, emmanuel newton uh, and then i also have my other instagram at uh, emmanuel newton at uh, bdsm protection uh you know that's pretty much what I got. You know, right now I'm trying to work on doing some more things. I know I need to market and promote myself more. So, you know, looking to do that, you know, hopefully with these podcasts as well, you know, I can uh, make more of a, a venture in that, uh, the arena of, uh, you know, being more uh, outsourcing marketing, you know? Absolutely, brother. Well, thank you so much. So if you guys want to do some personal training with a high level, lightweight, heavyweight champion, <laughs> Emmanuel Newton's a man. You know, you go ahead and uh, follow up with him on his Instagram at Emmanuel Newton. And then if you guys are looking for some, uh, you know, security services, this is also the man to speak with. Thank you so much, brother, for being on here today. Thanks for having me, brother. Yeah, brother. Absolutely, man. Well, that's another episode of In The Zone. If you guys have any other uh, questions, reach out to us. Then my uh, Instagram is at Mr. Raul Anaya. And we'll be seeing you guys soon.